taken. Hello and welcome to our webinar today. I've got Kelly and Brian Haverdell with me who are Trail Light customers and they're going to just talk us a little bit through their process of purchasing a Trail Light and yeah, how, how their life on the road has looked so far. Kelly and Brian, do you want to just introduce yourselves and let us know a little bit about you and, and your motorhome journey to date? Um, yeah, my name is Brian and uh, yeah, with me beside me in our motorhome is Kelly. And um, listen, we were wanting just to have the opportunity to um, travel a little, a little bit around New Zealand for extended periods um, in between still working and um we needed a a motor home that um we could live in f you know f for extended periods of weeks at a time if not more and um we didn't know that at the time when we first started looking for motor homes we were actually looking at a smaller motor home to um maybe use to commute to and from uh auckland when i had to come down to work and uh but we ended up going actually we could potentially live in a motorhome for a long period of time and uh, Rob convinced us that um, you know trail light was the vehicle for us what do you reckon Kelly? Mm. Yeah hi I'm Kelly um, yeah we were looking at property in the north and not finding what we were looking for and we'd been thinking of the motorhome thing thinking we'd really like to do that and so one day kind of got tired of commuting and looking at properties and stuff and I just went oh look I've seen a second hand one on um, on trade me at trail like can we just go down there and have a look and so started the process off of um, um, you know we're just walking through the motorhomes and Rob came and said hello and I guess that's how all good um, journeys start isn't it with an idea and then all of a sudden you're sitting here talking to me with with a motorhome well, I know not what we walked in looking at but walked out with <laughs> the perfect fit <laughs> Kelly you would be so surprised how often we hear that that you know people think that they know everything about what motorhomes is going to be right for them and then they show up on our yard and end up in a better direction yes so, so you guys obviously um purchased a, a a product sort of sight unseen from us didn't you you had done some research shown up spent some time with us and then um yeah, purchased a product that, that we were building at the time. So tell me about what gave you the confidence to, to make that kind of decision, I guess, without seeing it. Um, well, Rob, Rob showed us um, around the yard and we were, came in looking for like a small two birth um, motor home. And he started showing, explaining to us the difference between um, some of the smaller motor homes and, and potentially, what you need to do to be able to live in a motor home in New Zealand. And um, and we just hopped in a Coromandel with the bed above the... Wasn't the first one. Wasn't showed. the first motor home we looked at. We looked, right. um, but as soon as I saw the bed over the cab and that you could open the bathroom door, I work shift work, that, hey, I could actually sleep on this during the day if I need to catch up on my sleep or get ready for going to work. And... Um, and it just suited our needs and it was big and it was roomy and the two of us could walk four and a half up and down the motor home without bumping into each other and me not hitting my head on the roof and with all the windows open in the back i went this is actually a big house it's far bigger than i ever imagined it could be on the inside yeah it's funny um you know we after talking to rob about how we wanted to live and what we wanted to do and he sort of showed us around and we looked at a few and then he walked us into a coromandel that had just been sold it was sitting on the yard it was about to go and um we walked into it and we sat down and brian just went this is it this is the one <laughs> and so yeah so i think um it just seeing you just to buy it sight unseen the one we actually are in wasn't a problem because it's the same um the decor is a tiny bit different but that's not what's important to us it was it's the motorhome itself that was important to us yeah and there was one you know like it was still being built up i think it was 90 percent built and um from a factory tour and listening to rob and and knowing the history of trail light 65 years in business at the time last year mm -hmm. you just know 
it will be built to a high standard and it's proven to be that. And here, there's a picture up on the screen of um, you guys on handover day with Rob and all looking very excited about, you know, what you know is to come. I know that you, you know, had a lot of conversation with Rob back and forth about what product was right. And, and tell us a little bit about that process, that consultation and, and how you, I guess, perceive that, the pros and the cons maybe. Yeah. Well, I don't think we were Rob's easiest customers. Poor Rob. Um, I think we put him through the ringer. Um, I think, um, you know, I'm an engineer by trade and, and so is Rob. And, and there was lots of questions and there's lots of explanations from Rob and a lot of patients and every question got answered. Um, and no question was didn't fob us off at all. Eh? Fobbed like, off? No. no way did I feel fobbed off, no. man. So um, what? What a great listener! And he listened to what we wanted, and um, and he could use his knowledge of motorhomes and vehicles mm -hmm. and what's required and, and not not required. And the classic example is electrical systems. Mm -hmm. In fact. If I could use that as an example. Go for it. So, I don't know what we needed in the electrical system. I don't know much about it. And Rob's expertise came to the front. And um, we just wanted to live a simple lifestyle with a simple motorhome with the simplest um, systems possible. And But we knew we needed to have some, some sort of battery capacity storage, probably above what is standard. And, and Rob could explain to us the different power drawers. If you've got a coffee maker, if hair dryers, irons, the normal household stuff. Well, we've been trying to live a bit more minimalist. So we said, well, he said, go home and think about what you need and let me know. And we said, well, we only really need to charge our laptops mm -hmm. and yeah. maybe iPads. iPhones, iPads and laptops. That and that <laughs> the standard technology nowadays, isn't it? Um, we've got the the perfect coffee pot that just goes on the stove, so you know, that ruled that out. We've lived with a mocha pot on the stove, so we make pretty good coffee. We don't have hair dryers. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so and so he said, well, you just need to have a 300 watt or 360 watt inverter. You don't need a big 1800 watt inverter. Um, we said we want to live off grid. And uh, knowing that we may go to South Island and, and maybe one extra solar panel, one extra battery. He said, you may not need it. Um, you could use a little generator or you could, or the batteries might be a solution. And, and that's what we, we elected to go with. It's not the only option. And um, yeah, so far, you know, we've having it, it's only, we've only been in it over summer. So we haven't lived a winter in it, um, but we have not, drawing the batteries down except for when we've accidentally left, left a few things on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. okay. and that's, that's what most people do, right? You know, make a few mistakes and then all of a sudden you learn from them, don't yep. you? You learn, you learn about, you, yeah, you learn about fridge maintenance, basically. Yeah. <laughs> fridge, you know, the back gas powered fridge, you know, we must have left it on battery by mistake one yeah. day. And, and we do on a, on a, on a sunny day, leave it on battery and um, save some gas. But yeah. Mm. I guess that, um, you know, a really big thing that I hear Rob say to people all the time too, and I'm sure he said this to you, is you don't know what you don't know, do you? So you need to align with an expert of some sort to make sure you, you make a, a wise choice when you buy something like a motorhome. It's not sort of dissimilar to a house, but in some ways it is because there's so much we actually don't know, you know, like electrical systems, like how to operate your fridge. It's not just like plugging it into the wall like it is at home. It's more of a tool, isn't it? Yeah. And we weren't newbies. I mean, we just, I can't believe we did it, but we, we've never owned a motorhome. We just launched straight in, didn't want to make a mistake and buy something that we'd go, oh, actually, no, we need bigger, smaller, different, da, da, da. you know, to, we didn't want to make a mistake. And so we, yeah, never owned a motorhome. We simply launched at it and wound up with the right thing. No regrets. No regrets. No, no. No. So tell us a little bit about your research process. So you say you did launch into it. Had you done much research online? Like what? what um, you... So I was originally going to build a motor. I was going to buy a Fiat Ducato van and I was going to fit it out myself potentially. And um, 
and use it for commuting from a property in Kerry Kerry to Auckland when I had to come to work. And um, so I knew a little bit about that I could maybe give it a go. You've done the relocations. Um, I had done relocations, Lots of before, relocations. maybe three or four Maori relocations yeah. from Christchurch. And um, and I've sort of lived on on boats over weekends and stuff with friends. Um, read a little bit about tiny homes and thought, yeah, we could maybe live in a tiny home one day. So we were looking at maybe building a property, maybe building a tiny home and then building a small two bed. Read a few books on minimalism. Yeah. And, um, the great thing about living in a motorhome extended time, periods of time, you don't go out and buy stuff because there's no need, there's nowhere to put anything extra like you have in a house or a garage if you own a garage. Mm -hmm. so, so we've got a bit of stuff in storage and and um yeah, not much. and live in the motorhome mainly but we do stay at friends places or from time to time and um so it's actually saved a lot of money in that regard you know and yeah of course yeah which helps pay you know you, your money that you save you can use whatever you want with it really and whether you save or if you've helped purchase a motorhome or whatever your situation is you know it's it's money you can do something with that you don't have to go spend and um whether you spend it on other experiences but um you know the motorhome has just created um you know this, the motorhome is a big part of our life we've got to sleep in it and cook in it and eat in it and take all our food everywhere but we really bought the motorhome for what we can do outside the front door of the motorhome yeah. at all the beautiful campgrounds we can go to all the beautiful beaches mm. and we've got this beautiful photo up here of you guys somewhere amazing do you know where that one was totally and and um, we're not going to tell you because that's part of the <laughs> that's part of the experience so go find these yourself yeah <laughs> uh, i like that far north. So, we will say so, it's in the far north so put a put a, it's just to the east of cape Rianga and um one of the two northernmost campgrounds in the country yeah Beautiful. We, um, I did a, um, in a Benamar, not a trial light, but I did a two week over Christmas in the far north and it was just so amazing. Such a beautiful place to spend um, the summer. Yeah. yeah. We've had an amazing summer. Just, yeah, yeah. just so cool. So our mode has been, I had to buy boogie boards. You might've seen it in the first yeah. photo. So they, <laughs> they fit in the back locker. You've got a board bag for them. And so at age four, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at age yes we've, we've, take, we've taken up boogie boarding again just like big kids yeah, um, yeah. On you. and we've got some pretty good fishing gear so we've got some boots to walk around the rocks and fish off rocks or fish off the off the beach so we keep our fishing gear in the motorhome and um you know i don't know when you're going to show the webinar but it's just gone into lockdown but i just as summer ends the boogie boards will be left in storage and um, i've got a new set of golf clubs so we're looking forward to seeing how it progresses um in the next few weeks and months being able to go to and maybe staying you know when we travel inland around new zealand to maybe stay at the golf clubs i've never played much golf before no that's been the, <laughs> and so, the thing um, of lockdown is we've learned how to play <laughs> golf in the front paddock where we're staying <laughs> and, and so we are looking forward to you know not only being different places, but, you know, making up, taking up new hobbies, mm. um, getting lots of fresh air. Awesome. Hey, one thing you mentioned before was that you did a few um, Maori relocations before jumping into motorhoming. How, how does that, how does a Maori or a rental van compare to what you're in now? And would you recommend that to, you know, future purchases? Um, okay. I would say the difference between them was, you know, in a, in a relocation, you don't live in it as such you know you just take it from here to there but it gives you a feel for space and freedom yeah um but you can't compare it really because we live in this like really live in it um whereas a relocation you almost it's almost surface living you know you don't un, you don't really unpack into it and stuff but um but it was a great way of of you know we did a really cool relocation from brisbane to cairns Okay. Two years ago, and it was probably the best holiday we ever had because we just just knew we had to get this vehicle from here to there, and it was the freedom in between. It was oh yeah, let's just stop here, let's just stop here, and just the you know side by side sitting in the front of the cab, you know just it was mm. just traveling. You know that was 
that, that gives you a feel for that side of it, not so much the the living in it. What do you say? And I think the you don't you know you see a motorhome on the road and you go there goes a Maui or whichever brand it doesn't really matter. And well, that photo you've just shown up when you put a trail light next to that's um, a, a, a six berth motorhome, typical of any company that's rented out. You go, man. Our home is another meter. We dwarf a me meter and a half longer. It's taller. It's wider, which gives you the extra roominess on the inside. And um, most six berth motorhomes are set up with maybe a double bed in the back and a double bed in the in the middle and a double bed above the cab. But you know we can sleep four in the in our motorhome. We have had guests in our motorhome, but when if you can just sleep above the cab and make the whole rest of it like the rear layout on the Coromandel, we can open all the windows up and it's got nice settees and it's really comfortable. You can have a nap on them. Mm. It, it's just so much more roomy than one of the um, tourists. They're totally different markets, aren't they? You know, like yeah. when, we're, when we're looking to, you know, have something to use on extended periods or even weekends or even living full time, like, you need a totally different van than someone that's coming in for two week flat around the North and South Island. Exactly. That's right. And the Vico chassis, you know, like, I don't know if you're going to bring that up or not, but it is a truck, you know, and, um, and that's why it can carry more. So it is a heavier vehicle and you have to drive it accordingly. And, um, you know, the lighter vans certainly, um, they, they are lighter, so they can feel a lot peppier, but, there's nothing wrong with the Vico. We don't um, lack grunt. Yeah. Don't lack grunt, but you sort of have to drive it with respect, especially um, downhill. Yeah. And um, you're aware I, of your size. I'm anyway. very surprised at how well all the gearbox works, and it. it's eight speed, and it's got mm -hmm. full descent mode, so kind of south engine brakes and easy I got to drive. no qualms driving it myself. I'm just, you know, sometimes Brian's not with me, and I've got no no qualms at all, just going wherever I want. So. That's awesome. I think, you know, I think, Kelly, a lot of uh, women do get a bit nervous about driving something of, of size, like how Coromandel is one of the, the larger <laughs> models. But, you know, I've driven um, the Iveco and the Coromandel. And it's, it's great, right? It's easy to drive. You are aware that you're driving something big, so you're, you're more aware of corners and trees, etc. Mm -hmm. As far as the actual driving goes, no, nah, you're up there, the big steering wheel, yeah. and it's, you know, Mike has rights, so people get out of your way. Um, <laughs> but I have, yeah, no problems at all. I can park this up, I can ramp it, I can put the legs down, I can get it set up for the night, and then the next morning I can pull it down and, and move again, and I just have, like the pitch you've got up now is, that's me on my own at, um, at Waihi, at the NZMCA campground at Waihi. Wow. No problems. Not just not a problem at all. Yeah. Good on you. Yeah. Yeah. Easy. And I think um, if you're lacking in confidence, nothing. A bit of training won't um, help. Mm. With the why not go get some training? You know, like um, at one of the commercial truck driving schools. You know, if you're new to um, big vehicles, I think backing is a key. So if you need you need good teamwork, and if you're by yourself maybe try and avoid backing, but um, get some, just pay a few extra dollars and, and maybe go do your truck license or, and um, you know, you don't have to, you can drive it on a car license, but learning how to use the mirrors properly, especially backing to the left or to the right, you know, that's, that's a huge part of, um, of it, but don't be daunted by it, you know? Yeah. And that's one thing we offer too. I mean, I, I'm not sure if you guys did with Rob, but, you know, there's um, Mandy, she's our sales manager, or myself, or any of the sales team, um, you know, will jump in and take, go for a test drive, or, you know, help people build some confidence behind the wheel, because, you know, it is such an important part of purchasing the right product, isn't it? It is. You, you spend a lot of time driving it, so, yeah, you need to be, you need to be confident about driving it, otherwise you're not going to get to explore like we have. <laughs> So one of the things, um, one of the things we've introduced during this lockdown, guys, is a, a right fit assessment. So it's an online tool similar to what we're doing now, but it's using some of those questions that Rob would have asked you about, you know, getting into the right motorhome. 
and offering it to people online. Have you got any kind of ideas on why a consult is particularly important or, you know, how that could help or value people who are looking at, um, at product? I think, yeah, um, because you just, you, like, like you said, you don't know what you don't know and you might have preconceived ideas and somebody like Rob will go, will question you and just, is this really what you want? Or how do you see yourself doing this? And mm -hmm. suddenly you go, oh, oh yeah, actually that's a good idea. And yeah, I think you really need somebody like that to just make sure that, that you are thinking along the right track, that you are um, covering all the things that you perhaps haven't thought of or understanding everything. What do you think? Yeah, I think, um exactly right Kelly and, and um, the other thing too is you're given a base model and everything you add to it adds up to weight and um, so you have to you have to ask ask the question I think I need this I think I need this I think I need this and and then talking to someone like Rob go well maybe you don't need that and maybe you don't so either it's gonna it's either gonna add in cost of your build or add in cost and weight and um, I don't know some of the things we looked at were what about a washing machine well actually we've lived in it for five months we haven't needed a washing machine uh, we do have clean clothes on <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, we use the washing machine and, thing so much and, and you end up being able to really advise people around that. Yeah, and, and you know, we thought about getting a bike rack because, A, we thought we needed bikes and then e-bikes and, mm. you know, we've been on it in five months. Because it's got such a good fridge capacity, you go, well, actually, if you're, up, if you're well organised, you can actually get to a store and buy a pile of food, load it in the fridge, maybe some dry goods, some cans, and go somewhere you don't actually need to ride a bike anyway. I mean, if you like to ride a bike for exercise, Maybe but we, will, yeah. we thought we would need our bikes instead of towing a car, we'd get bikes so we can ride to the store. But it turns out we've got enough stuff in our fridge. We don't need to go to a store. And after five or six days, we'll just probably move location anyway, yeah. get some food to last another six or seven days. So we do a lot of walking. We walk a lot. Which saves, you know, so now you don't need a tow bar. You don't need a, a bike rack you don't need your bikes you don't need your tools for the bikes you don't need your clothing for the bikes and um you know it doesn't stop us maybe adding that in the future too yeah with it um trail light um can add whatever we want at a later date so rob was right he said just get what you think you need try your motorhome out for a while and if you really decide you need it then come back you know and, and we can fit it mm. And that's really interesting because I guess, you know, a lot of our market is people that are newbies, you know, that have never mowed a home before. And, and that's just, uh, you know, that's great. Like jump in, get involved. And then, you know, decide when you're a bit more experienced after some, some months or years on the road, what you actually need. And I'm sure those needs would change too, right? I think so. I mean, we look at our, our bed, love our bed, love where it is, love sleeping up there. But we're both quite realistic about it. One day, we won't be able to get up those stairs. One yeah. day. And so, one day, we'll have to think of something different. We might have to change our motorhome. So, mm. yeah, things do change. Mm. Don't want to, but yeah, it will happen. One, yeah. It'll happen one day. We'll come to the, you know, uh, okay, it's time we need to do something a little bit simpler for us. Or, I don't know. And same with, um, you know, that happens to everybody too, Kelly, you know, like you guys are both still really young and, you know, enjoying yeah. <laughs> part time. I mean, you, you, you know, a lot of people have this, I guess, preconception about motorhome is that, you know, that sort of 75 plus and, you know, very much fall into their retirement years and, you know, visiting campgrounds and whatnot. But when you do it, when you're still young, you've got that kind of freedom to get to places like that's in the photo now, completely off the grid. and just enjoy being together, I guess. Mm. 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 Yep. Yes. You... Sorry, go. Yes, and we are en enjoying this time together. You know, we got rid of our children and, um, <laughs> <laughs> and we, this is our time, you know, this is, this is our time to be, to have our fun together. Yeah, and just have a, having a Kiwi OE. Yeah. Man, we live in a beautiful yeah. country and um, as much as people say that it's getting crowded with motorhomers and campers and that, I mean, our experience, there's plenty of great places we've been to campgrounds, especially outside the, the public holidays where we've had the place virtually to ourselves. Mm -hmm. And 
now we live in a beautiful country and um oh, you know we've only se- we've only really been around northland and a little bit of um bay of plenty you know and there's so much more to see hey and i guess that um you know that's there's there's an element of silver lining to what's happening at the moment in the world with international travel restrictions you know likely to be in place for some time it might mean that our roads are a little emptier than they normally are with with motorhomers well there's more people like us out there enjoying it <laughs> yeah hopefully you know it's our chance to see our own homeland isn't it yes it is yeah yeah hey so i won't keep you guys for too much longer so thank you so much for your time but have you got any final pieces of advice to anybody thinking about motorhoming um thinking about the lifestyle anything that you might like to add i think um if you can do it do it because you don't want to our thoughts were we don't want to regret later on going, oh, we should have done it. And so there are way more pluses than the minuses. You know, there are the little things, of course, where you go, oh, bugger. But you know what? Everything else outweighs that. And I just think I'm so glad we didn't wait. I'm so glad we didn't think, oh, let's just wait till retirement or something because Mm -hmm. who knows? So I'm just, if you're thinking about it, do it. Do it. Do it. I think so too. The NZMCA is a great um, resource. By Kiwi made, um, Charlotte make beautiful motorhomes. They make comfortable motorhomes. Um, man, they listen to your needs and can give you good advice on it. Write your for and, a, and against the different motorhomes. But um, big peace of mind knowing when you buy a trail light that you're buying into the legacy of um, good follow up maintenance and they look after you it's been our experience um good warranty the truck you know you can get a good extended warranty especially in our vico there's the high mileage vehicles from everyone i've talked to you know and, and we had looked at some secondhand Ivicos and secondhand coromandels and hard to come by aren't they uh-huh, yeah and the prices are exactly what Rob said, I know a big part of it is the depreciation. And if you ever see them, we'll talk to friends, um, you know, and if you can get to spend a night or two in, a, in one, um, you know, Kelly spent a night in a friend. How old was that one? Maybe 2010 Four. or even like yeah, earlier. It was, yeah, it was a bit of an older one. I spent a night okay. before we committed to it. Brian said, before we commit to this, you need to sleep by yourself in one for a night and see how you feel yeah and friends of ours friends of friends had one and they let me do that and i just felt secure. <laughs> and they still own theirs and they yeah. won't sell it so yeah you know if it's good enough for them it's good enough for us <laughs> yeah. and so we're lucky and, and it has been good because i'm not always like kelly spends a few nights in it by herself so it's good to know that she can ring trail light should anything go wrong or ring Ivico. so there's nothing wrong with buying you and um yeah do it i guess that's a you know it's great that you guys have felt that from us um you know people probably think i've paid you to say that but you know one really big thing that's awesome about trail light and it's awesome working for a company like that too is that they genuinely do you know really respect and honor their customers and i think that that's something that's not always the case with businesses today so it's it's also great to work for them as well yeah Oh, thanks. Yeah. So, um, it was so good to hear that, you know. Extra lollies for us next time we come <laughs> through the service. Yeah, room. well, I'm sure I'll, I'll <laughs> chuck in some extra lollies. <laughs> so, hey, look, thank you guys so much for sharing your journey with us. Um, for anybody that's watching this, if you're keen to have one of these right fit assessments and make sure that you're like Kelly and Brian, loving their motor home when you're in it, then reach out to us. We've got an online version of that consultation that's really um, designed from you know, over those 65 years of experience. There's, I'm not sure exactly how many questions, but it's a, a full questionnaire that will help you narrow down what that specification looks like for you and you know what potentially the right product is for you and for your lifestyle and taste for adventure so thanks again for joining us uh, we hope you continue to love that motorhome of yours and continue to enjoy life on the road awesome thanks ashley thanks ashley thanks guys see you next time you're at trail light okay oh that's so cool <laughs>